Welcome to another episode of Eclecticist. Eclecticist is an investigation of everything from a very British perspective by two brothers who consider themselves to be normal chaps, and we do it one topic at a time. We are Benjamin DeCampos, a designer and a believer, and Jeffrey Campos, myself, an engineer and general devil's advocate. We choose the topic of interest, we spend a little bit of time researching it, and then we have a discussion and we publish the notes at the end. The main benefit is that we want to foster a greater understanding of the world uh, before we all die and hopefully prompt a little bit of thought and discussion around each topic we tackle. This episode, we will be talking about gun ownership and everything that pertains to it. Gun control is a vital component of any society that values the rule of law. However, the availability of weapons and the freedom to defend oneself and one's property using firearms could be equally vital. Is it possible to maintain a safe and just society with free and easy access to ballistic weaponry? Should gun possession be criminalized and wielded only by democratic governments? In this show, we're going to discuss the polarizing dilemma of gun ownership. What is gun, gun ownership exactly? I mean, I don't own one. Do you? Uh, no, I don't own one. Um, I have been interested in guns. Um, when I was younger, I used to uh, think they're really cool and I used to draw them all the time. But I think my um, very uh, young, inexperienced, soft brain um, just didn't really put two and two together um, in terms of uh, them being dangerous and um, pretty horrible uh, in many respects. Uh, they were cool. Um, and I think lots of kids think they're cool because uh, you buy lots of toy guns. The toy guns are... A, a thing, aren't they? I'd completely forgotten you went through a major gun phase. Yeah, I'd forgotten until just then, <laughs> in fact. Um, there's just something about them. Um, and I'm sure at some point during this discussion we might talk about how maybe some people don't grow out of that, which is why uh, adults um, go gooey over guns in the same way that I used to as a child. Yeah, it is It is peculiar. I mean, it was a phase with you, and it was, it was a very strong and pronounced phase and you know you really were heavily obsessed by guns for a short period of time and you know it does seem polarizing in that you can really not understand the appeal or the desire for weaponry and yet you as an individual can completely change your view either way mm. at any time it would seem to me it is very peculiar. I mean, me personally. Not you as in oneself. Right. You know, you can, you can, as you, you were really heavily into them at one period in your life. Right. And you, as the same individual, then completely changed, I well, believe. Yeah, but I, what I was saying was I think it was just sort of maturity and realizing as you get older that, um, um, you know, guns uh, aren't as glamorous as um, I thought they were. Plus, also. No, well, maturity being eight. No, I think I probably... Well, I, I can't remember exactly when, but my phase of guns was exactly the same as f a car phase where I'd play with, you know, toy cars. You know, I would play with toy guns. Although, interestingly, I now play with real cars. Um, In a dangerous way. Yeah, but our father um, is uh, a kind of a gun guy. Not firearms. He likes air rifles. Um, and he has a collection of various uh, air rifles and pistols as well. And some pistols do look like firearms. Um, and uh, it, there is something about them. Uh, I picked up a pistol and it looks like a real gun. It has a nice weight to it. Um, you know, I sort of looked at myself in the mirror with it and, you know, held it sideways, gangster style and all this other stuff. And I just think um, many of the people that we might be talking about during this discussion might be people who just take that to the next level. But is it, is it the actual guns themselves? Is it the physical, tactile hardware? Or is it some elevated feelings that possession of that hardware gives you? Well, Are you projecting? I think it's a little of everything, really. I think there's some maybe uh, hunter instinct or something in our primitive brains that quite likes the feeling of power um, and all that kind of thing. And Empo also, empowerment. Yes. Um, and also, 
the, the maybe the, <laughs> the craftsmanship, the engineering, who knows? It could yeah, be I, think, it, I think you're right. I think I can definitely see the argument of personal empowerment. And uh, this is very well illustrated in youth gangs. Um, if you're a youth in a gang and you have a gun, you command respect. Not only because of the power, the literal power that you wield, but also everything that goes along with it and everything that arrived at owning that power. So, for instance, having obtained, having the power to obtain a firearm in a gang credits you. Uh, yes, I think so. So, um, so guns are then attractive to you because of the power they mm. imbue you with. Right. And also the just obtaining a firearm imbues you with a, a sense of empowerment and respect from and perceived respect from your peers. Yeah. So empowerment definitely is a reason that I hear often cited for gun ownership. It makes yeah. you feel powerful. Um I mean we're talking quite generally about gun ownership. Um because it's not really that much of a big deal in this country. There it really is one country in the world that seems to get the headlines for um, an obsession with with guns. Somalia. Yeah. And Yemen. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe I should say something They're literally like, born with AK-47s. <laughs> okay, maybe I should say in the developed world. Um, which Switzerland. Is, They're well, all Switzerland gunners. is interesting. Uh, Switzerland, you can have as many guns as you want, but it's the bullets that they control very heavily. Hmm. But, I mean, there's a very real reason why the Swiss are all armed. It's because they don't have a military. They right. don't have a standing army. Mm. So all of the citizens are considered the army. Mm. So they are, crazy. They are trained. Well, it makes sense. They're trained very well for ordinary citizens. And they are maybe not expected. But, you know, if push came to shove, it would have to be fairly... Mm horrific shoving going yes. on in order for them to uh to act and uh arm themselves and well there's defend their country so there's a very real reason why the entire population might be expected yes but there's two things there well one's the the irony of switzerland um you know well known for their neutral and very um peaceful people uh, who who coat their bullets and antibiotics yeah and all that kind of thing um so this uh, historically peaceful nation that never uh, takes sides in wars um, are so heavily armed. Um, but the other thing is, is that if you've got people carrying guns, surely that would mean there's a risk of altercations, scuffles becoming fatal in the way that they wouldn't had they just had fisticuffs. Well, I think there are many cases cited where pushing, shoving arguments in bars spiraled out of control purely because one member in the altercation was armed, yet not, had no intention of ever using their gun. Right. But the their foe spotted the gun and thought, wait a minute, you know, this drastically changes the odds of me walking out of here alive. I'm really going to have to get a hold of that gun and shoot the other guy. Yeah. So if you know, if you're in a fight with somebody and you learn that they are armed with any kind of fatal weaponry, then that, that changes the entire atmosphere of the... Oh, well, it does. It's no longer a debacle. scuffle. No, it, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a fight to, to the yes, death. Yeah, well, exactly that. Um, in fact, Sam Harris said something quite similar to that in his uh, very long um, blog post about uh, gun ownership, which is worth reading. Um, listener, I think I've read that at some point. Is this an old one? Uh, it's not that long. It I mean, was, he's, he has a real thing for self defense. That's well, he does indeed. But it was shortly after the uh, the the Sandy Hook of the massacre, um, which was when was that? Must have one been. very heavily armed young person. Yes, walking into a school. Yeah, which has kind of uh, set this whole debate alight again. Um, and he makes a couple of interesting points about it, actually, uh, which is, if you're just talking about a numbers game, you know, with all 50 million kids going to school every day in America, um, the chances of them 
being involved in a massacre is pretty slim. Um, and so um, our sort of perception of this sort of thing is dis- is distorted by the media. No, absolutely. I mean, Sandy Hook was exceptionally rare. I mean, that's so incredibly rare. You know, having one person walk into a school, this was uh, 28 people right. dead. Really? 28. Okay. Two injured, 28 killed. Right. Um, incredible. Yes. Um Actually, I mean, there's quite a lot of these that we can just sort of rattle off. I mean, they're 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 um, very infamous and big events. The Columbine, shooting, Columbine again, yes, um, indeed. Virginia Tech, that nutter, yeah, uh, and all this the, kind the, of the thing. movie theater in Aurora, yes. But the hoo ha um, afterwards was about the uh, the gun lobby, um, saying. Well, we protect our banks with armed guards. Why don't we protect our kids? Essentially, saying the answer to um, the threat of a school shooting is more guns. Mm. We should throw more guns in the mix. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, you, there's no correlation between the number of bullets available and the number of people killed by bullets. I mean, obviously, accidents happen. You know, children get a hold of loaded guns. Although, why any parent would keep a loaded gun in the house? I mean, they, easy enough to separate the bullets from the guns. But I guess the reasoning is <laughs> if, you if you have an, in, uh, an invader in your home, you don't want to faff about with pushing a magazine into a, you want to keep it loaded and ready and hidden somewhere where you can grab and instantly start shooting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, I mean, our, our intuition on this kind of thing, I think being that you and I, um, like are, swords are both, um, quite English about this is we feel we don't need that. We, you know, we can dial nine nine nine, and that's all we really need. We don't need to keep a gun, and we kind of think that if we have a gun in our house, the chances are someone breaks in, we might get killed with our own gun. Mm. That, that's what I think. Yes, but here, I mean, it's a risk analysis. In this country, we're a little bit more relaxed with gun gun ownership and the need for gun ownership based on the statistics of gun crime. I think in America, it's different because there is the fear and there are the statistics. And because gun sales is a very large market that is cultivated by gun manufacturers, gun lobbyists, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of fear and crime. Mm. So you think, well... I need to be able to defend myself, therefore I'll buy guns, because there's so much gun crime out there. But if the crime isn't there to begin with, you'll feel less... You'll, you'll have... A, you won't feel such a need in order to have guns to defend yourself against gun crime. I, I don't know. I sort of think that in America, they brought it on themselves. And maybe there are historical reasons for this. I mean... Well, it was from of- the independence, you know, the battle for independence it really was, you know, everybody's armed and everybody's shooting and we have the right to bear arms. It's constitutional in the United States. And, uh, you know, they, they, they the- successfully fought off the yeah. oppressors and uh, broke away uh, because of... Uh, they reserved that right. Yeah, their, um, their ability to wield arms. Okay, well, it's worth talking about um, the attitudes by country as is listed in, in, in the show notes because this is one of those things that um, well, I wrote this down. It's one of those things that creates more resentment and general derision of the United States um, on, on this side of the continent. No, of this side of the Atlantic, I should say. Um, the pond. The pond, yeah. Um, we kind of view Americans as just gun-obsessed. What the hell is it with guns? And my own experience with this kind of thing was um, on a, a, a web forum um, of a car group of people. Um, web forum, I didn't describe that very well. Uh, it's mostly Americans on this particular car forum. And um, someone on the off-topic... Uh, thread uh, off topic section posted this thing hey everyone let's show photographs of our right to observe the whatever amendment and he showed a photograph of him and his gun and then someone else posted a photograph of him and his gun 
And then some British guy said, what the hell is it with you guys and guns, you freaks? And then someone posted, oh my god, I can't believe, you know, you said that. Now everyone knows that you don't have a gun. And he was being serious. Mm. And so that, to me, kind of illustrated um, something. Or, th- th- or that really... Well, it illustrates p- the polarization. Yeah, that, that painted a picture. It's like, I, I wouldn't have even thought of that. It's like, this really is a game. It's like, you, you can't let people know that you haven't got a gun. Otherwise, you're worth burgling. But it'd be, well, I don't know about that. But certainly there seem to be national or, boundaries. Or, or, I mean, it's a national thing Hmm. america gun ownership is a right and it's completely normal and it's obviously reasonable to want to defend your family and your property yes and to arm yourself Hmm. it's your responsibility to defend you and yours similarly there are other countries that that are that are similar i mean corsica very tiny island um everybody has a gun Hmm. There are mafia there. They're all armed. There are lots of hunters. Hunting is is very popular. Everybody hmm. has hunting rifles. But effectively, everybody in the population has a gun. Switzerland, most people are armed, and they don't necessarily have bullets. The way, though. well, not necessarily, but they have bayonets. Hmm. But the idea is, <laughs> you can't trust anyone. You can't trust the government. You have a right. And perhaps you should, by rights, defend yourself. And you want to do that with a gun because a gun is a leveler in a lot of ways. I mean, if you you know you had if you if the only way in which you could defend your property was to have an arm wrestling match with the invader, well then one side is going to have a massive advantage over the other, most probably. But guns, you know, if you're a little person, a big person, a round person, an old person, a small person, if you have a gun, (laughs) your gun is just as lethal as anybody else's gun. Well, that's not necessarily true because, uh, you know, you might be just a better shooter than the other guy. The other guy, the other guy might have, you know, a massive howitzer and you might have some snub nose 38. No, obviously, but generally speaking, if you're holding a small yeah. revolver and another person is holding an automatic gun you're pointing them at each other yes. they're equally as deadly yeah no I, I i i i get that um well the thing that sam harris says in his blog which is definitely worth reading is something which i don't think we think about much um which is guns i mean it kind of actually this kind of um speaks to your side of the argument just then um if you got some guy going nuts with a knife and he's going around knifing people. You might not want to get involved in stopping him because you don't want to get knifed. But from a distance, you can pick him off with a gun. But, yeah. yeah, well, that's another advantage to guns. Absolutely. You can hide behind a, an object and, and fire a distant yes. target without necessarily putting yourself in harm's but, way. But going back to our very English view of this type of thing... Um, I think most of us, when we hear about the U.S.'s obsession with guns and this type of thing... From the media. Oh, from the media, yeah, absolutely. But there's a lot of traction in that. Uh, I think it doesn't take much for someone to start shooting their mouth off um, about how backwards the United States is. I mean, just look at God, guns and gays or whatever they tend to be obsessing about. There are a lot of guns in the United States, and um, what are we going to do with them? They're just swilling around the country. So we better learn to live with them. <laughs> I mean, it's true. There are there are a huge number, you know, actual physical count of weapons. What are we going to do? I think uh, America certainly does seem to have uh, the vast majority of the, the s- certainly handguns in the country. There are statistics out there, and I thought I put some in the show notes, but I did not. But it is some horrific figure. What is? In hundreds of millions of guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Available. 300 million guns or something like that? It's just incredible. No, well, speaking of statistics, it is interesting looking at statistics about this kind of thing. I mean, it is true, I think, that it's the most violent country or something like that in terms of gun violence. Yes. Um, Now, again, it's I feel always uneasy about... um, citing any statistics because i'm generally cynical or skeptical about any statistics whatsoever and you no, can absolutely. read that i, I but, completely agree with you so am i 
but you've got all this um you know a lot of gun violence but also the the violence is very much on the decline apparently absolutely i think violence is on the decline worldwide i think there are lots of studies that seem to uh, sing to that hymn um and uh, this is uh the reason for this is a, a greatening feeling of empathy through education uh, i read uh stephen pinker's book the the better angel of our nature uh, the better angels of our nature and he uh speaks about how violence is on the decline hmm, yes and it really seems to be statistically it seems to uh the statistics seem to bear his thesis out yes and that is to say people are becoming better educated and there are lots of conveniences for the human condition and that in order to maintain access to these conveniences it's probably a good idea not to embroil yourself in gun violence and i'm speaking in terms of nations and uh, it certainly seems to be diminishing obviously there is still a lot of violence and there are always outliers and uh, there are always failed states out there where gun violence is gone absolutely off the charts but generally speaking it's uh it's declining which is a good thing but gun ownership is not necessarily declining people still do want to own guns most people who own guns will never ever use them in violence they will never be used mm. and i think most people who purchase guns for self-defense mm. purchase them thinking that they'll never actually use them and probably don't take the necessary training on how to use the guns because mm. they think they're never actually going to use them. They're purely a deterrent. They're purely to put their mind at rest, but they're confident that they're never actually going to have to reach out and yeah. shoot somebody with you them. See, I don't know. So there, there are people who buy guns um, as purely as a very sincere form of self-defense should the uh, opportunity arise. <laughs> And um, then those people who just like the empowerment. Um, and there's those people who want the guns because they want to commit crimes. Yeah, people who actually want to use them. Yeah. It, well, that's empowerment as well. They want the power in, no, but to the, convince other people to give them what they want. No, but this is the thing. But you've got people who just like the empowerment, but they legally obtain guns. and They're not going to go around you know, robbing banks or killing people or anything like that or, or using, you know, threatening people or, or doing whatever. But I just think that what it, whatever the gun laws, if guns were totally outlawed, I think if you're a nutter, um, some sociopath or psychopath or whatever, then you'll find a gun. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. They're easy enough to find. Yeah. Evidently, there's a real loophole in the United States where you can buy guns in car boot sales, effectively, and they're completely off the register. Oh, but they're Unlicensed not... and you know, oh, they're not tracked. No, they're supposed to be antiques, those ones. Yeah, but you can get antique M16s. Right. I mean, you know, what does an antique, if it's anything over 20 years old, well then, you know, you've got at least a billion guns <laughs> that are still functioning properly that are older than 20 years. Mm. But, uh, you know, there are enthusiasts who like guns purely for the design. I mean, they're, they're ballistic devices. They're very well put together. A lot of thought has gone into them. Centuries of, of design well, and that, thought. That is certainly the so appeal enthusiasts. for me. So enthusiasts. No, that was certainly the appeal for me. I remember quite distinctly when I was a child uh, about guns. Um, I would draw them, little intricate little details and stuff, because they were, I don't know what you kind of call that design, but they are functional but it was phallic, I think is the word you're struggling Well, with. that's another thing I was going to get on to. Um, that actually might also be an elephant in rooms <laughs> when talking about gun laws. In fact, I think The Onion did a um, some kind of uh, bit of satire on that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, well, I mean, that comes under the empowerment I think so. uh, thing. I guess yeah. that's like someone having a, a big car. Yeah, it's an it's an ego booster. Not everyone who has a big car, you understand. <laughs> no, but absolutely. The, the, but the cliche of someone, um, sure, doing that. But, uh, but yes, uh, with guns. another another, I suppose you could argue legitimate reason for owning a gun is for hunting. If you are, but again, hunting is sport, so it's, yeah. it's killing animals not for food, but just killing animals just because it's fun. Do you know what? It's it's interesting about this because you get people who will um, roundly criticize the United States in a kind of quite 
ill-informed way. I'm not making this up. I have spoken to people in this country who are just will always look for any excuse to sort of uh, bash Americans or America in general. But these very They're same... the same people who enjoy all of the films and the literature and the and the the products. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. But music. Um but they're the same people who in fact one person in particular um who was talking about on a shooting range and how much that person loved the feel of firing a gun and how it was almost addictive. Uh, and in a way, explaining uh, what at least some of the passion and the desire for owning firearms or shooting guns or whatever that the Americans have. I, sus- I certainly subscribe to that. It is fun firing guns. I mean, you're firing, you have a little device that you have control over in your hands and you're effecting something at a distance. Well, that's fun. Even if it's a BB gun and a ping pong ball, which I certainly enjoyed you know but i think with. i think it's like enjoying the sound of breaking glass or something like that it's a kind of transgressive thing it's it's kind of dangerous and i think there's a lot of enjoyment to be had out of that do you think it is dangerous i remember an abibi bounced off and uh, came right back at me and hit me and i thought i'm dying where did it i didn't hit actually you? die though where did it hit, it hit you? me right in the sternum oh that's all right yeah. bbs won't do anything but one time me and my friend ralph we went out shooting each other with bb guns and uh God, that was stupid. And I remember he shot me, and I was, and I was um, sort of aimed at him, and he hit me in the hand, and it was right near my face. And that would have been an unbelievable disaster. And had he have actually hit me in the face and done some serious damage, it would have been well. Wasn't that stupid? Of course, that would have happened. Mm. But I guess it was <laughs> that was part of the thrill, I suppose. People like driving fast because it's dangerous. Yeah, I guess. Um, you know, it does. It just always seems stupid however you look at it like uh firing guns in the air in celebration those bullets are going to come back <laughs> that, that uh, they, they really lives. can they really can kill people especially if you're <laughs> firing into the air above a large crowd no, like the, the ira used to do that sort of thing and i think that's um part of some celebration culture in parts of central america or something where they do that but but how <laughs> stupid it's incredible but how much do we fuel our interest in firearms through the media and through rap music well you know it's it's so culturally contrived you know you watch movies you watch any action movie and you know guns are are everywhere and they're just firing them all the time in any kind of situation and we're so and we're so used to hearing gunshots which mm. are completely nothing like guns actually sound movies they're always deeper there's always more bass and they're just they're cracking sounds in real life um, but you know, guns are fired all the time in every movie that you watch. Uh, a gun, romantic a, comedies, gunfire. A gunshot terrible. sounds like uh, a book falling on a uh, a stone floor. Well, it depends on the gun. It does indeed. But, but whenever you hear actual gunfire, like uh, in the various Middle Eastern conflicts that uh, we're involved in, they're cracking sounds. Yes, the reason why I said that about the book falling on the floor, the uh, American author, the uh, what's his name, the Gonzo guy. Um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Was oh, yes. Um, tip of my brain. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, he uh, killed himself with a gun. And uh, his wife or whoever just thought it was a book falling on the ground, but it was a gunshot. And so that's another thing about owning guns is uh, they're more likely to be used for... For suicide. Uh, for suicide. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's appealing. If you really want to kill yourself, I mean, you're really seriously want to, wanting to kill yourself, you just don't want attention. You want to actually kill yourself. A gun is attractive because you believe it to be fairly painless, mm. fairly quick. And uh, that option is available if you have a gun in the house. And many studies have been made on suicides and whether or not the person who had committed suicide had access to a gun in the household. And usually, yes, very few gun suicides are committed by people who did not have a gun available in the house. That is to say, there are very few cases where somebody went out of their way to go and buy a gun and then bring it home and then kill themselves. They had already mm. owned it or it was already available in the house. Yeah. So what actually are the numbers? Maybe we should talk about this, about how dangerous it really is um, or how more dangerous you're likely to be in which parts of the United States than, say, in London, for example. Well, from that book, um, The Better Angels of Our Nature, Steve Pinker's huge, huge book, uh, which I have, if you'd like to borrow it. 
I think Sam Harris uh, recommends that um, book on this very topic. There's a, there's a little quotation here, um, an excerpt, I should say. In summary, the main benefits of gun ownership are feeling safe, free, independent, and powerful. However, if you own a gun, it is 22 times more likely to be used to kill you, suicide, or someone you love, accident, homicide, and a heated argument, than a stranger in self-defense. The costs of living in a society of gun owners also means a substantially higher rate of homicides, suicides, and accidents. The more guns and the more bullets you have in a population, the more accidents, deaths, homicides you will have from guns. It's just a fact. I mean, there was a big argument when there, there was a debate a while ago in this country where the question was asked whether or not we need to arm the police. And someone put the statistic that if you were to add 14,000 firearms to the population in this mm. country, you are guaranteeing more deaths by guns in this country, statistically speaking. But uh, now that apparently is um, a kind of failure of intuition uh, to come to those conclusions. Because it seems obvious, doesn't it, that you put you, you throw more guns into the mix, you put more guns in the street, and obviously there's going to be more gun-related deaths. But apparently it's not as simple as that. Nothing is ever as simple as that. No, it's not. Um, having armed guards in schools, is that such a bad idea? More guns, armed guards in schools. That's true. Well, that's the argument. The argument is, certainly the American argument that the gun lobbyists put forward, is that having owning a gun for protection decreases the probability of being fatally wounded in an attack what? and yet uh, in the guardian there's an article entitled high gun ownership makes countries less safe u.s studies find right i have the link in the, the show notes and basically it really is the more guns you have the more dangerous the population is you know, in in terms of in itself. Yeah. Uh, Though I'd be wary about reading anything that The Guardian says on this subject. Well, no, it was a US study. It was, uh, the Guardian yeah. was just reporting on a study. Mm. The study was done. It was proper statistics and everything. I have the link. It was very interesting. Okay. I, I'd, I'd, more I'd more be guns equals more that. gun death and uh, overall a, a less stable country. But as we said earlier... People get angry. Statistics. You have a heated argument. Lots of people have a, a real argument mm. with someone and in the heat of the moment mm. if you have a gun you know maybe it's you're just going to be tipped over the edge mm. whereas if you didn't have a gun you may the next day wake up mm. and think wow you know i was completely out of order that was outrageous how mm. could i possibly get that angry i need therapy yes uh but you won't be thinking that if you actually killed somebody the previous yes. night because you had a gun available so while a gun certainly can be effective in defending your home and family and your your person against an attacker mm. by changing the mind of the attacker once yes. they learn that you have the ability to ballistically defend yourself. Also, it's never that black and white. Mm. People have difficulty using weapons or doing anything in times of crisis. Yes. Well, this is the other thing I was going to say. I mean, there's two, two things about what, what, what you just said. And the second thing will be a whole other chapter of, of, of debate. Um, the first one is learning how to use a gun. Again, Sam Harris in his blog, um, he admits that he owns several guns. Uh, he's not sure what side of the fence he's on in terms of the gun debate because it's so complicated, which is fair enough. But he owns several guns, but he feels it's his absolute moral duty to learn how to use the gun so he spends a day a whole day every month or so um at a shooting range learning how to use a gun properly not everyone would have no the that's resources right. to do that Th that's right so clearly he's talking about in an ideal world surely in an ideal world you wouldn't need a gun because there'd be no crime i mean i being a cynic i would think he spends a day every month at a firing range because he enjoys it really yeah, not so much enjoying the fact that he is better able to defend himself and his family, more that he just enjoys you know, firing a gun. I, I, I think that that is very cynical of you, and I think that's quite unfair, because I think Sam Harris is actually very honest 
about things like that. I think he would say if whether or not it's just some primal. Um, He's an edge c- case, though. Uh, carnal. He, he, well, I think he probably would. He's an edge case in that the books that he has written and the views that he has espoused are inflammatory to <laughs> very large populations. Yeah, of but the not in a calculated way. So I can way. imagine. He he would want to learn how to defend himself in his jujitsu and, oh, and yeah. all the Brazilian mud yeah. wrestling that he's into, and well being, and and uh, and firearms. And none of this surprises me. I'm sure he has a panic room at home and, and all the rest of it. You know, he has reason to really fear an attack. Yes, he which gets, is he gets death threats all the time. Which, yeah, fair enough. Yes. I mean, a death threat. I, I just imagine receiving a death threat. I mean, just imagine it. I yes. mean, I'm sure you haven't received a death threat. But if you were to receive a death threat, that's you'd be shaking. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be right for a couple of weeks. I wouldn't have thought that's pretty horrendous. Um, and if well, he's getting it, them all yeah, the time, it, it depends. It depends um, what kind of death threats well, there are. I'm going to kill you. you. That, well, <laughs> that wasn't that scary. Now, the, the other thing about what we're just talking about is the other um, huge uh, part of this, which is what about bullets that don't kill you? Uh, faulty take them back yes or bullets that aren't meant to kill you i should say are you talking tasers or rubber bullets stuff like that yeah, yeah no, why does non-lethal that, defense yeah, why does it have to be killing someone when you could have some kind of device that will just render them imo- inoperable well there are i think this is a, a, a technological point i think at the moment arguably there the technology is not there I where you totally have non-lethal disagree. non-lethal weapons that have the range, have the portability, no, no, no. have the reliability. Well, we say range. I mean, yes. I don't think you can go on top of a building and, you know, snipe Pick somebody off with a taser. With a taser. <laughs> but in terms of, like, someone breaking into your house, like the argument about you want to protect your property, protect your property and your family, yeah. you want to have a gun in your house so you can murder, no, not murder, you can kill someone in yes. self-defense. Mm. Okay, self-defense could be a bit of a kerfuffle. Now, a taser is a pretty, um, uh, what's it called? Effective immobilizer. Effe- yeah, effe- there you go, exactly that. Or pepper spray or something like that. Mm. But maybe more a taser or rubber bullets, like you say. Now, I don't yeah. know much about rubber bullets apart from the song. Yeah. By Load Up. Marilyn. 10cc. 10cc. Um, you don't know that song, do you? I don't. Load Up. I'm, no, rubber I'm bullets. happy not to know anything about that song. Uh, this might be the outro music, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. So rubber bullets, um, tasers, and stuff like that. Why aren't we talking more about that? And well, it's like, hang on. So we've got the American gun lobby, uh, who gets so much exposure, and it's like they're very powerful. Well, they are very powerful, and yet why aren't there other lobby groups that are more about making our lives better in the world? Not these outspoken groups of people that uh, seem to have so much airtime. Anyway, but yeah, it seems like um, surely if we had. Uh, guns that didn't kill people but rendered the um the, the target uh completely inoperable inoperable yeah inoperable as i say um surely that would be a much more humane way to uh solve this problem i, I agree with you but in certain areas they aren't as effective as you might like for instance in home defense I kind of would want something that can fire through doors, fire through sofas, fire through walls. Like uh, the um, South African yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I if I hear somebody screaming in the bathroom, I want to be able to shoot through the door and kill them. Yeah. A taser just is, is Even just Even if gonna, it's your wife. Yeah. A, a taser is going to inconvenience the door a little bit, perhaps. Uh, you know, make make the, the the wall a little uncomfortable. But it's not, it's not going to harm the person who's trying to harm you. Whereas a gun... Yeah, and also... When somebody holds a gun or levels a gun at you, you know what it is. You know that it can kill you. You know that those hot little bits of metal can go right through your head. Whereas a taser, somebody holds that up and you think, okay, it's a taser. Well, I can dodge that. They only have one shot, etc., etc., etc. I don't think it's baked into our psyches. Well, that's to... a taser, but I'm sure there are guns which shoot rubber bullets. Well, as I say, it's a point of technology. I mean, yeah. the technology could be developed. But I mean, this is sort of like the renewable energy companies versus the established oil companies. Are they being perturbed by the you know big gun or whatever you call the gun industry in the world? 
I think it's it's not in the interest of gun manufacturers to have non-lethal devices on the market that become more popular. So we're just talking about cynical economics. and. But it is economics. I mean, I think the reason why gun ownership is so prevalent in the United States is, market. is, be- yeah, is because <laughs> they have such a well-established capitalist framework and it's a product. It's a commodity like anything else. And if you're selling a product and you are a very mature business, you will have cultivated your market to a great degree mm. through you know all of the machinery available from marketing to yeah, yeah, general indeed. advertising to you know all, all kinds of very intelligent ways to get it into the minds of Americans that they really do need to buy their products. They really do need to have a gun. And, and they're not really American if they don't have a gun. Well, that's the other drawer. thing, yes. Um, it's, it's constitutional. Which is a kind of really... And this is the problem argument. with absolutist documents. <laughs> Yeah. When you have absolutism to fall back on, that yeah. that almost by definition gives you the the weight to argue for your corner if you chime with it. Right. Way. Well, it says it in our holy text, therefore. Yeah, but it's not though. I, this is what I don't understand about American politics, and maybe someone can write in, or maybe we can do a podcast about it. It's there are amendments, so it's not like holy text written in stone because things could be changed. It can be, but there are some things that simply cannot be. Why? I mean, they, they everything can be changed. Everything yes. can be negotiated, yeah, for so sure. It's not absolute. But a lot of it seems like it's there's absolutely no way. It would be a shot in the dark. If right. That, thing came out. that oh, deep down. What was I going to say about changed. that? I was going to say something about that. Oh, I don't know. Now, another reason why uh, we were talking about how violence is declining, uh, and this is true of most countries, certainly most developed countries, uh, most countries who are not new to gun marketing. Uh, and one of the reasons for this is that populations are aging. Mm. So um, there was a piece in uh, Psychology Today where, uh, this is an excerpt, uh, they say, uh, decrease in crime is due to aging. The decrease in violent crime since the 1990s is the U.S. population is getting older and older and older people rarely rape, rob, assault, and murder others. So purely it's a numbers game. Where did you that? This is an article uh, in Psychology Today magazine. Uh, It was called uh, The Trade-Offs of Gun Ownership. Right. Very good article, extremely well referenced. I think I've got that little soundbite. And if if most of the population are disinclined to commit crimes, then the overall statistics will reflect that. Uh, so, you know, the older we get, uh, crime drops. Well, speaking of the, the cynical um, marketing... But bingo is on the rise. Bingo, yeah. Uh, cynical marketing. Uh, I was looking at an ad um, from the early 20th century, which is probably worth including on the website. And it's... Um, an ad for firearms for kids. It's about making sure your kid is safe by giving your kid a gun. Wait, is this the UK? In the UK, you have this the, is not uh, the UK. No, this is the United States. You have the British Association for Shooting and Conservation. They have a kids section called Young Shots. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, but no, this isn't that. This this is an ad about giving uh, uh, giving a young child a revolver while they sleep. Um. <laughs> actually giving them a revolver yeah. while they're sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Um, or just sort of put it on the pillow next to their heads. Yeah, it's you, know, you, you don't take a chance. Now, I, I wonder how many of those guns they sold uh, and how many kids killed their siblings. <laughs> but, I mean, if you were a marketing agent for a gun manufacturer... Well, of course you'd want to sell them to it's, kids. It's easy to think of reasons why somebody should own a gun. I mean, you could probably convince somebody. You can easily use bend the statistics and say, look, in your area, in your neighborhood, this happened, this happened, and this happened. Had this person been armed, hmm. then perhaps they would have had a chance. It's a small price to pay. You know, The, the money is almost irrelevant when yes. we talk about what it could do for you yes. if you were to be attacked. Um, you know, it's a necessary evil. It's uh, portable and attractive, and uh, we'll ser- we'll service it for free in the first six months of ownership. But I mean, what, uh, you know, a pitch could be made, and it's quite convincing. But what what you have to um, say about that is, it's you're in a similar arena as cigarette manufacturers. I mean, it's very sort of 
you can make a case. It's very unethical the way they uh, try and um, give you reasons to either smoke or buy guns. Funny enough, I was reading... Yeah, but there uh, are much better reasons one could argue for owning a gun for self-defense than smoking. It depends who's making Smoking those is arguments. much harder. So, no, I'm sure. Although it's addictive and that helps. Uh, yes, I'm sure you, someone could make a case for cigarettes. Or um, you would be remiss morally if you didn't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. I was uh, thumbing through a Guns and Ammo magazine, um, which is uh, an American magazine about guns and ammo mm. and i was uh leafing through this and uh it really is interesting again from our british perspective of looking at the photographs of uh these guys with guns because lots of photographs of dudes <laughs> with guns um i guess the same like a guitar magazine or something like that you mm. know dudes with guitars or a car magazine yeah or st- stuff like that it's just I, 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 it's like anything you have different manufacturers of weapons you have lots of them. no no i, I get it competition no, I, I get it but i just mean from a, a cultural point of view it just blows my mind because i'm so english to look at these whereas um if you're from the united states maybe less so i don't know well i don't know i mean there's a culture here for guns as well i was uh walking past no really i was in mayfair the other day and i was walking past holland and holland and they have a branch opposite the bentley showroom is that and, the uh, uh, this is the gun sh- food store? No, Holland and Holland. That's Holland and Barrett. Holland and Holland are a bespoke manufacturer of insanely expensive shotguns and clothing. Okay, and oh, uh, this oh, is the sort of shop you don't walk different. into. You make an appointment. No, no, but th- th- that already you're talking about land owning upper class toss spots no, with that's shotguns, true. not but, firearms. No, but they are firearms. But these are their art. I mean, they're jewelry. You you buy these guns. Because they're beautiful, yes, arguably. And right. you look at them, the craftsmanship. And, yes. and like anything, like cars, like, like, like anything, you have different manufacturers, different models, new technologies coming along. You can keep up with it. Mm. You can nerd out on guns. And I think a lot of people do. And Americans, I think, are very nerdy about guns. You know, larger caliber, larger firepower, greater muzzle velocity, uh, better portability, um, better sales. All of these statistics are like baseball cards, hmm. and people get interested in trading stories about the statistics around gun manufacture, like anything else. Well, it's a product that just happens to be lethal. I mean, again, we're talking about uh, uh, another type of um, gun enthusiast or owner. In fact, more an enthusiast. Like, for example, there are people who really love guitars. They collect, you know, vintage Stratocasters or whatever, but they don't like music. In the same way, I'm sure that you could have people who collect guns and you know, look at the rifling on this, but yet they don't like the idea of using them in anger. Well, I think enthusiasm... And, Maybe they don't even like nerdish, the idea of shooting them. They, they just like them. Nerdishness around guns, I think, is part and parcel of the overall envelope of reasons why you might want to own some. I think everybody who owns a gun is a little bit nerdy. I can imagine you'd say, do you own a gun? Well, actually, yes, I do for personal protection. Which one did you get? Well, I got this one because of this, this, and this. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. You can quickly get into a a nerdy discussion (laughs) about a weapon. And I think the owner would be party to that. I, They're I, not going to say, "Oh, well, I have no real opinion on the design." I, you know, I didn't. It wasn't the design no, I, I was interested in. I think no, I, I I disagree. I think, in fact, earlier on during this discussion, you said that there are people who buy guns and have no intention of using it, and they hope they never do, and they just put it away, and yeah. that's that. Yeah. I don't think they turn I think around they could and get say, nerdy. "Hey, well, actually, my no, uh, no." I I think if, if they were asked, you know, why did you buy this gun, and what do you think about it, and I can imagine they would have an opinion. I didn't want a large gun. I wanted a smaller gun. I'm, I'm, I like the weight. It's, it's, it seems to be lighter. The man in the shop said that it never jams. And I, I like the idea of, you know, when I need it most, mm. which will only be once, hopefully, if that ever in my life, I want it to work properly. And uh, this manufacturer, I ethically don't like what they do because they also make cluster bombs, but... This other manufacturer, it really is all about personal defense. They're going to have an opinion. If you're going to buy a gun, you will do the research. You'll get nerdy about it. And I think people will have a conversation about it. And a lot of people enjoy having a conversation about it. And that may launch them into an interest in guns. You're watching a movie and you see the exact gun that you've purchased. 
you know, you, that's the that's my gun. Mm. He's using my gun. You, you may even get up and get it out of your sock drawer and accidentally kill one of your in-laws. Uh, I'm These sure. I, I'm sure there are some gun owners that might. Speaking that speaking of speaking about what guns are. I mean, what are guns, right? What, what actually are they? And, and I find this interesting because when you think of a gun, I mean, when I think of a gun, I think of a pistol. Mm. Something you can hold in one hand mm. and is absolutely not designed for anything else but killing people or, or shooting targets. It's certainly not for hunting. You don't hunt with p- pistols, right? Mm. Except unless you're hunting people. Mm. So a pistol is a, a small handheld device designed to stop another human who's attacking you. And preferably, you know, there are different types of guns. You can have different size bullets. You can have very small bullets, which will pass right through a human body. So if you have a huge person running at you in a rage, mm. and you have a, 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 a gun that fires very small bullets, uh, they will go right through the, the body and it won't actually stop the person. They make it angrier. Or you have very large bullets that the gun fires and mm. perhaps they're made out of very soft metal right. or the actual bullet is hollow, hollow point, so-called. Yes. And that really is like pushing power. So it really stops their forward motion. Mm. And, you know, that gives you a lot of power. Yes. And, and protects you against people. So the, the sort of lethal weapons that are out there are pistols, revolvers that have sort of revolving chambers that contain the bullets. There are semi-automatic pistols, and they contain sort of little... um metal containers that you push into the bottom of the gun, the magazines that contain bullets in a linear fashion, stacked, and you can fire multiple rounds, you know, maybe up to 15 or 16 or 17 bullets in one loading session. Uh, yeah, and the different types that? of bullets you have. So no, I have pistols. to cavil here. So what was that? A pistol? Revolver? Because revolvers are pistols. A semi-automatic. Are they called automatics? What's the Colt 45 Semi-automatic. Called? A semi-automatic uh, you know, is... Do you know what? No, they're not. They're called automatic. A Colt 45 is an automatic handgun. I thought an automatic is something that continuously fires, just by depressing the trigger. But surely semi-automatic but surely is when you have to pull the trigger every time but for surely every bullet. This, a revolver is a semi-automatic, if, if that's your definition. You don't have to keep cocking it back. No, but a, no but a revolver defines the type of gun that a revolver is. That is to say it has a revolving chamber. But it's semi-automatic. It is also a semi-automatic, I suppose you could argue. Yeah. What, when you talk about a semi-automatic, you're not talking about a revolver. A revolver is like a super category. <laughs> so, well, you know, there's there's going to be a phylogenetic tree of all of this. But I'm just saying the basic no, but I, I, types no, but are... I, I think we're in a, in an arena where we're gr- someone we're would, so unqualified yeah, it's ridiculous well, well some, if someone were to listen to this well no I'm, just, I mean, I'm being vague here yeah. deliberately but there you're, are you're, you're being vague but quite specific but okay if there are handheld pist- guns called pistols guns machine guns and there rifles be, I, should, I think, if you're looking at the notes there there should be a colon after pistols so that's a, a problem of punctuation pistols so revolvers and semi-automatics are the most popular ones revolvers yeah. have a revolving chamber containing the bullets which rotates as you fire yeah uh, one bullet for every trigger pull we should also have say semi-automatics which we, are, we should also say that so you've got handguns pistols revolvers and semi-automatics up there and they are kind of for probably shooting at close range so if you've got someone in your house you want to have a pistol to be able to um, fire in rapid succession in their rough direction, hopefully tag them. Yeah, but if you want to, if you want to kill people in their living rooms <laughs> from a, a building top, uh, you want a rifle with a scope. Yeah, so uh, you know this is not something that you can quickly pull out of a pocket. It's yeah. something that you get out of a suitcase and assemble. And rifles can be rifles, which are semi-automatics, or I guess, or fully automatic, or fully automatic, or yes, which I guess would be what most people would call a machine gun. Yeah. Uh, why would anyone want a machine gun? I, 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 when I was a kid, I certainly wanted to have a couple of Tommy guns. Do you know, I know someone, right? Um, actually, he's a friend of mine, and he has a machine gun in this country. He, uh, he, he went through all the proper channels. He's a member of a gun club, and he had to have someone come around and check him out to make sure he's not a psychopath and all this other stuff and so on and so forth. And he, then he got his license, and then he bought this uh, great big... I don't know, AR-15 or something a, like from that. an A-10 Warthog. Yeah. It's, uh... Hey, I tell you, that's that Predator film. It has a lot to answer for. Why? After Which... seeing that and seeing the chap with the massive Gatlin gun cut down oh, the entire yeah. jungle, I thought, well, you know, who wouldn't have thought I want one of those? Who, who wouldn't want a Gatlin gun? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I want 6,000 bullets a minute. Actually, no, the reason why I brought that up is about this guy. He's a normal person-ish in this country who has a machine gun. 
What he also has is access to an, a lot of land where he can shoot these guns. And this is the thing about the United States. Normal people in the United States are more likely to be able to afford big properties. It's that, a big country. Yeah. And so you've got all that land. People like to shoot guns. Yeah. In this country, we can't really afford to have big lands unless we're you know, landing in upper class top no, spots. No, indeed. And if you have a large property on a large plot, a greater number of attackers could uh, assail you. I mean, you yeah. know, an army, I'm thinking of Spartacus here, an army could be marching towards you. You want to have a lot of bullets. And uh, Incidentally, this is a bit of nerdery, but there's a manufacturer out there, I forget their name, but they produce a gun called Metal Rain or a system called Metal Rain. Right. And they produce weapons that can fire bullets up to a million rounds oh, yes. per minute. I, I These saw, are electri- yeah. electrically triggered bullets. I, I saw the YouTube clip. Unbelievable. It's like this one salvo of bullets. Like, boom. And, 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 and really, I mean, that's cool. You know, I can, I can definitely see the appeal of ballistics. But then I'm biased because I grew up with somebody, our father, who uh, is an enthusiast. Who with, are, with, in, in, anyway, with guns. Yes. And... Uh, it is interesting. And on the, the point of bullets, because it's the bu- bullets that actually kill people, the little hot things that come out of the, uh, the tops of the guns, you can have different types of bullets, of course. You can have lead ones, which are actually made of lead, so not good for you. Mm. Uh, they're the cheap ones. Uh, they're very effective. Nice. But because they're so soft, as they travel through the barrel of the gun, they do quite a lot of damage. They smear the metal on the inside of the barrel, and it's notoriously hard to clean the inside of a barrel because right. they have the spiral sort of rifling in order to set the bullet on a spin trajectory so it doesn't spin yes. uh, as it's traveling through the air, Actually, so it's more accurate. While you're on this subject, that's interesting that you bring that up, because I was reading something about guns. It was actually about the proliferation of guns and how we can't get rid of them. It's like we better learn to make peace with guns because there's a lot of them. Guns can last for ages. Yeah, forever. They can last for centuries. Forever, effectively. A well-engineered gun, for example, that might not have been used very much, but regularly service i mean i don't know what you do with the gun i'm I'm guessing you'd need to service it it's like any piece of uh, engineering um yeah so lots of guns absolutely and the the russians famously (laughs) made a billion ak-47s and they're they're literally i don't know if you've seen the film um lord of war right with uh but but it's a andrew nicole film who's a genius um and it just showed at the beginning it just massive hangers full of AK-47s, just yes. huge, massive stacks of ex-military AK-47s, which is true. And, you know, it was just when, certainly when the uh, the Iron Curtain fell, uh, just it was a, mm, it was a free frenzy. For all. And, and these guns found their way into so many Absolutely. other countries. It's, it's of, of course, Kalashnikovs are actually still being made. They are still made. Not in Russia anymore, but lots of uh, rogue nations mm. uh, make them, as they do other guns. It's not difficult. To make a gun. Right. I mean, there, there was the uh, the article a couple of months ago where a 3D printer, yes. somebody using a 3D yeah, printer yeah. was able to build most of the components of a gun, a functioning gun. Yeah. And there's a big hoo-ha yeah, about, well, this, oh my uh, goodness. This is what I was going to say about But, but in fact, I mean, it's not difficult. You know, you don't need a 3D printer to build a gun. No, but that was just um, real lazy journalism, I thought, the fact that there was such a hoo-ha about that. Well, I think there's, being a cynic and uh, superstitious, I think there is a reason why there's a big hoo-ha behind it. I think the threat of 3D printers is such Mm. to the industry at large that perhaps they're trying to work out a way in which they have to be licensed. And if governments could say, you could be 3D printing a weapon, therefore you have to pay for a license to own a 3D printer. Mm. That gives them a means of... That gives them yeah, the ability control, manipulation. Well, well, they want to. They want to make everyone angry. Control the means of production. Yes, always. Yes, you don't want to give that away mm. um, in a communist kind of way. So I think licensing mm. 3D printers and the the pretext for that yes. is, ooh, you could be building a bomb. Well, you can buy 3D printers from Apple now. They sell two 3D printers with free gun templates. Indeed, do you know how much they are? In 3D printers, thousands. No, well, Hundreds. you know, Maplin, you know, is good for value. This and the other. Yeah. 3D printers, f- like, eight, between 800 and 1,200 £1, pounds, something like that. Is that all? And yeah. also, also, Maplin sell guns that fire fly swats. I don't know if you've seen that. Guns that fire fly swats. Yeah, that's no. quite anyway. But the other type of bullets <clears throat> are jacketed bullets. These are bullets, and you, simply they have a metal top, mm. and the metal is then coated in something. Right. So you could have a, a lead top of the bullet, and it's covered with a metal jacket. 
Um, and so that doesn't damage the the um, the barrel of the gun when you fire it so Heaven much. Forbid. Much more accurate, more aerodynamic, more well-balanced usually. And of course you can have lots of other different types of coatings. You can have plastic coatings, metal sort of plating, or mm. um, solid metal tops, all kinds of different bullets to do lots of different things. But generally the idea is... You want to stop things with pistols. You want to stop somebody running at you. You know, you want to do the, the maximum amount of surface area damage and uh, retarding as much uh, forward motion as possible. Uh, but of course, we have uh, non-lethal is a category of self-defense, and I suppose guns. I mean, they're guns. Um, so non-lethals are chemical sprays. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> again, if you think about it, you have a chemical spray. You might spray yourself. They're very effective. Though. They, you, they would have to be shaped like a gun in order to make to to ensure in in the heat of the right. melee, you want to be able to point it in the right direction because mm. you know your, your little round squirty bottle. Yeah, you're going to spray your own. Eyes. But that might save you because your assailant will be just laughing. Yep, um, electro shock weapons. So those are the tasers, uh, and you can have ones that are wired. Well, usually they're wired, so two little contacts hit you yeah and both of them need to and then a charge you you are completing a circuit yeah so then you know a large amount of voltage is passed through your body incapacitating you but there are also wireless ones mm. so they're lots sort of the wi-fi um, tasers right so they have a greater distance and they you cannot break or pull them out as easily uh, and i'm sure again technology will will come along where you can have uh, all kinds of sort of remote incapacitance weapons um, you know, they evolve, uh, which is part of the interest. You know, it's interesting to see what kind of weapons we're going to have tomorrow. You know, we're following the drones. Uh, we're following, you know, perhaps they'll have uh, internal home drones soon that'll be able to incapacitate well, people I, who try and break in. But, I mean, I think that's kind of um, a kind of way to sort of summarize the whole gun thing. It is interesting. I think people do find guns interesting and killing interesting and war interesting that's why there's so many films about it that's why news is chock full of it and we're, we're fascinated yeah being killed it. violently is the most interesting thing that can happen to you i mean See, look at television it's yeah. crime drama it's every episode the, every, you know, every channel uh the one of the first ever rap singers you know rap rap singing uh gil scott heron he had a song i can't remember what it's called television drug of the nation something like that where he says um just how many shootings fatal shootings that a child has seen by the age of you know 10 or something it's like a hundred yeah for example that must be more than that now because that was back in the 1970s but yeah i mean we've got a lot of uh um glamour involved i mean it is cool isn't it to carry a gun to have a gun all this sort of stuff definitely the, the positive media portrayal of gun ownership is incredible given the amount of crime drama that's constantly on the television constantly i mean you know every cop in america from our perspective has a holster you know an under armpit holster yes uh you know with a big huge mirror finished silver revolver in it i mean it's interesting maybe we, that's just the 80s we know. spoke about the actual numbers but you know given the sort of um the coverage of that kind of thing uh, is it any wonder that we'd want to buy guns because we think that we're going to get shot all the time fear selling the but, manufacturers are, you know, the manufacturers either advertise directly in, in by whatever means through movies or whatever it is. You know, perhaps the, the shadowy investors and the producers for most action films mm. and also through their influence through the lobbyists. You know, they, they pay enormous amounts of money to lobbyists for hire and also their own internal lobbying mm. departments to lobby governments, get their representatives elected publicly in order to make sure people have a reason to uh, to purchase a gun. It would be a disaster if uh, people were no longer buying their products. And in America, you also have, you know, again, the lobbying has arguably pushed uh, some interesting laws uh, into the books, uh, one being Stand Your Ground, which is oh, quite yes. famous. This is the lawful ability to defend yourself uh, or your property or your family with uh, deadly force yes. and not to, to stand down. It's your It's your property. You are being invaded, hmm. so you really can kill that person. And again, through the fear of the minds, you know, if if somebody's attacking you, they, they've broken into your home with the intention of causing you harm, hmm. 
and you have a gun, mm. you're thinking, okay, if I don't kill this person, yes, I will always be thinking they're going to come and get me. Or they're going to convince mm. their friends well, to come and get me. Yeah, but I have to stop this now. No, but again, you know, that's you don't know if that's what goes on in their brains. No, of course not. But I what, no what I will say about that... Um, but it's something I, I think I would think. You could make a case, you could make the argument that this country has got a kind of ass backwards about that kind of thing. Do you remember when um, some gypsy broke into this farmer's house... Yes. And the farmer shot him with a shotgun. Kid, it was a kid. Who was a kid? I think the person who was shot was almost a child. No, I don't I don't know about that, but he was definitely um shot and killed. And uh I believe the man the 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 farmer who was protecting his property was arrested and uh, whatever happened, he 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 was then completely in hiding because you know gypsies they you know, they like to settle scores. Um, and he, he was forever... Um, watching his back. Watching his back. Yeah. But I think the point was is that... the point in, in this country, if someone breaks into your house and you shoot them, you're going to prison. <laughs> this reminds me of the, uh, the recent uh, debacle with the young black man who was shot and... Oh, yeah. Killed. That's this. Uh, is that the yeah. one you're talking about? No, 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 no. But that—that th- that is the stand your ground thing. No, no, no. This was he was a neighborhood watch guy. I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Neighborhood watch chap is out armed, basically looking for trouble. Mm. And he saw somebody who wasn't where he should be right. from his perspective and looked kind of dodgy from his perspective, mm. and engaged him. Right. And then it quickly escalated, and that person died yes. as a result of this chap being armed. So. He had a gun. He had the confidence to approach someone. He had a role, you know, a, a defense role or, a, you know, a police role. And you know, someone died. Um, perhaps somebody wouldn't have died if he didn't have a lethal weapon on him. It happened to be a gun. And uh, this is a problem. I think it's a problem. Mm. And I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of fear. And I think ultimately it's cultivated by gun manufacturers and it's helped by all the things that help it along like the constitution so i think i think we've covered quite a lot of bases here Mm. i think we should probably wrap it up um you can uh, find the notes for this and all of our shows on our website eclecticist.co.uk you'll find links to all the past shows and links to all the notes that we generally try and work from our little bits of research and if you have any comments or any ideas for topics and future shows please leave us uh, a few words in Mm. the form that you'll find at the bottom of the website Uh, for the outro music this week um, we selected a song called strange ways it's very ambient it's dark background music and it is a royalty free piece of music made available by google for youtube right they've made available a lot of bits of music so it's easy for you to put music onto your videos that you upload to YouTube without the fear of being sued. Oh, yeah. So that's very nice of Google to do that. A lot of it's very high-quality sound, and uh, I quite like this one. It's Strange Ways. So until next time, we'll leave you with that. And uh, the topic for our next show is to be TBC. confirmed. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>